Hello, family. Welcome to 15 Minute Food for Thought. We are so glad to be here. We're glad that you discovered this video today. And with me, oh, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Deborah Morgan, the host <laughs> for um, this evening. And with me, I have these beautiful women, Angela Miller, Hi. Kelly Armour, hey. and Robin <laughs> McCoy. Hi, everybody. And we're just going to dive in. We are continuing with the seed principle, sowing the life of your dreams by Aubrey Johnson. If you've been following our videos, there's 13 chapters. And today we are on chapter 11, sowing seeds of relational growth, improving my relationships one seed at a time. The title of right, that just automatically got me. <laughs> so mm -hmm. uh, one part that I, I do want to bring out, but then I'm just going to veer away from that real quick and let the ladies jump in because I'm excited to hear what your perspectives are on this chapter. On page 130, he says, although relationships vary, the key to improving them is the same. Sow seeds mm. of love and they will grow. How oh, beautiful right. is that? And, yes. be, and and just as you marinate on that, I just want to jump to the side and talk about real quick quality relationships. This chapter has been sticking with me and has made me just really formulate a different type of prayer. And this mm. is something that I wish our 15 minute family would consider the quality of your relationships. And as the, mm -hmm. as the author suggests that we're building these one seed at a time, but I want, I pondered, what about having serious quality relationships, taking time mm -hmm. to evaluate them, reevaluate them, the relationships that you have, are they drawing you closer to God? having mm. intimacy with him or are they pulling you away? Are they mm. drawing you closer to your purpose or mm. are they helping you waste time and bringing you away from your purpose? And that's been heavy on my mind. And as parents, our job is to pray for our children, whether they're young or old or adult, praying that God mm. will surround them with quality relationships on their jobs, for their mates, you know, for children in school, that God will surround them with people mm. that are going to help them improve and not somebody who is going to take them in a direction that God never meant for them to go. Mm -hmm. So, okay, ladies, that <laughs> is what was on my heart. I would love to hear what's on yours. Somebody take it away. <laughs> I'm taking away, Debbie. Hey, I'm with you. But and what stick out what stuck out to me was the whole chapter. But right there <laughs> on one page 130, 132, where he says, it's kind of towards the bottom. Soul to the spirit and see what happens. That part I was like, mm. okay, here we go. Mm. <laughs> and I, I just said, and it, it's so self-explanatory. Like we say, try it and see what happens. It's the same thing where <laughs> you want to have your relationships correct, but you got to have the correct attitude going in. So like an example, if you're going in and you trying to have a relationship, whether it's for like my marriage or relationship with the kids, your job, your business, anything, you got to have the right attitude because it's going to affect what you do. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. if you're saying bad things or trying to project something bad it's going to come out bad and it's the same mm -hmm. with God and living for him if you're living for God you're going to have happiness joy peace you know focus just everything and if in the mm -hmm. opposite if you're living for Satan you're going to have and you're going to see what happened you're going to have sadness evil you know wrongdoing all kind of things that don't even equivalent to having you have a healthy relationship so that's what how I took where he said, hey, so to the spirit and see what happened. What's going to happen is you're going to live a happy life. 
you know, you're going to have a focused life. You're going to have a joyous life filled with faith and joy and energy. So that's, that's what beautiful. I took for to build your relationship. And that's the only way it's going to be. It's that's a beautiful. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And, you know, we've been. I, oh, I'm sorry, Angie. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just saying we've been talking about the seed in the garden. So uh, piggybacking mm -hmm. on what Kelly said. If you sow good things, good things are going to come up. Like if you plant a watermelon seed, don't be looking for a banana or a strawberry <laughs> or a cucumber. True. So I'm sorry, Angie, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. It, you know, like Kelly said, this book, the whole book, I mean, mm -hmm. you have to read it over multiple times just to, because there's so much in here to just take from. But you know how the Bible says, in order to have a friend, you must be friendly. Yes. And what does that mean? So the same qualities that you want from someone, you must also exhibit. And mm -hmm. what is that, you know? And so um, I took from page 138, the ultimate test. The goal of every relationship should be to contribute something mm -hmm. of value to another's life. Um, mm -hmm. Whether that person is your spouse, child, friend, coworker, ask yourself, are they better off for knowing you? Mm. that's the you know are they better <laughs> off so you know that that could kind of tell you know what you may need to work on and how you can be better um and to be a better friend but it was just so much in here you know and what are you pulling out of someone are you going to pull out good or are you gonna pull out the bad are you helping to help build a character I mean, it's just, it was, it was a lot in this book and about friendship. So I thank God for you all as a community and building those yeah. genuine quality friendships. And that does not mean you talk every day or whatnot, but you know who they are. And so I thank God. I'm grateful for that and for people who have placed in my life. Yes. Amen. That's beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Miss Robin. Well, um, that same section that Sister Angie was reading talked about honesty, and I didn't particularly mm. care too much for this one because this, mm. this had a this had a lot of sword, you know, as iron yeah. sharpers iron. It's got yeah. a lot of that in here for me, and I think because um, and I just have to be honest, having been divorced, you know, mm -hmm. and um, I just have to come from that angle because everything that the word says is true. There's no falsehood in the word. There's no falsehood in the fact that um, that which the word is sent out to do, it's not going to return void. It's going to accomplish that which it's sent. But that does not negate the fact that we live in a sin nature. You know, we we are born in a sinful state. So when you uh, when he was talking about marriage, I had to keep it in light of the kingdom that I could not um, honestly sit here and say that, I sowed all these wonderful seeds. You know, again, I have been divorced. So I have to just tell the truth that the scripture that talks about iron sharpeneth iron. So when you go into the uh, marriage, you don't necessarily know that just because you are, you're, this is your intention. You have no, I had no intention of getting divorced. No, it didn't occur to me. But I, it occurred to me as things were progressing a certain way. And I didn't get divorced after six months. I was separated for almost three years before I actually physically got divorced. And so, um, again, coming from that angle, I have to say that as iron sharpeneth iron, what does that mean in practicality? Well, in my quiet time, I kind of, in the natural, when you pick up a box of something, you have every intention of that you pick up this box of something to prepare and you're going to follow all the instructions to get this cake or get this um, whatever it may be from the grocery store. But on every single box nowadays, it comes with the warning label. And the warning label says, you know, um, this, this particular item was made in this particular environment. It had the potential to be made with nuts in an environment that had nuts or whatever, seafood or something. And because it was made in this environment, we need you to be aware that it may trigger something if you're allergic. Mm -hmm. It may trigger something. And as a married person, married and single, going into a marriage, I have to have that in my forefront, that this person, as it says on page one, 138, um, 
Relationships are God's tools for molding and shaping people. They mm -hmm. are intended to draw out potential and support growth. Well, I wish that that was nice and easy. I wish it was pretty. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it's not. There's mm -hmm. rubbing, there's friction. There is something in that person that's going to be triggering some, some sin nature in you. Mm -hmm. But it's to mold and shape you to be like Jesus. You know, mm. and that's what I loved about the truth of the word, negating the fact that, yes, I had this experience. It does not excuse the fact that I'm here to be molded, mm -hmm. to be shaped into the image of Christ. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's going to look like being in a relationship that somebody that, that brings out the worst in me mm. that I've got to go back and get before the Lord, fast, pray, uh, call, reach out to my community to mm -hmm. say, hey, yeah. I ain't feeling like Jesus. What I just said was not Christ-like. Mm -hmm. And he's not pleased. I know he's not pleased, but guess what? Blah, 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 blah. So mm -hmm. I need my community to go, hey, let's step back. Let's pray. I'm here to help mold and shape you into the image of our father. So um, yeah, that's why I kind of wasn't real pleased because I kind of felt like I might be a Debbie Downer in this particular. Um, <laughs> hey, this particular don't say record. that. <laughs> right. Okay, well, I won't no. say that, but I just have to speak with honesty. No, no, I'm talking about the Debbie part. No. <laughs> oh, no, that part. Well, it's a SNL face, <laughs> SNL skit. And so, but I loved it because, um, because God is so faithful, you know, that even though I've walked that walk, it does not mm -hmm. negate and doesn't give me, give me license to not be like Jesus. Mm -hmm. to not right. do the work and to put in the work to be like Christ. So yes. anyway, that was my experience with this chapter. Well, I like Robin where he, at, at the mm -hmm. at very title of the chapter, he's saying, improving my relationships. Mm -hmm. So that already gives us a clue that we haven't arrived <laughs> because Maybe. you don't, mm -hmm. you, I mean, when you improve something, it's making it better than it was. And so mm -hmm. I love that it gives us room to grow. Like he's saying, yeah. this is relational growth. And when, as far as marriage is concerned, it is true when the scripture says to become one. And one thing people don't tell us, you know, when you get married and God gave me this revelation when I worked in the daycare, when I saw the kids pounding the um, Play-Doh mm -hmm. together. So two separate colors, a red, I mean, a red and a blue, and they were rubbing and smashing and pounding. And I was like, wow, that's what it's like to become one in marriage. Mm. There's some pounding, mm. there's some twisting, there's some rolling, but <laughs> at the end mm -hmm. of the day, the end. it's all mm. by God's grace because we are imperfect people. You like two imperfect people coming together, mm. trying <laughs> to be one you know, holding Christ as the center, but we're still obligated to work on self. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know if this is true, but this is my summation. I told my husband, I don't believe there's going to be a marriage ministry in heaven. I don't think we're going to be standing there talking about, you know, <laughs> oh, he made me. No, 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 no. It's going to be <laughs> you and God and him and God or her and God. I don't think we're going to be standing there talking about, well, I didn't do because my spouse. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. This is in, mm -mm. in proving, like I believe Kelly and Angie both said, comes with that attitude that you bring to the mm -hmm. table. That's what I'm responsible mm -hmm. for. Yes. You know, like Robin said, we're not, you don't, you don't go into marriage planning to get a divorce, but you don't. And like mm -hmm. Pastor Lois taught us, we don't even know where the line landmines are until we step mm -hmm. on them mm -hmm. and the things that people deal with. But yes. the point of it all is that we all need to reassess our relationships. Are we growing in them? Are we improving in them? We're not trying to improve the person. We're improving mm -hmm. us. And like you brought out, Angie, are these people that I'm in a relationship with, are they better because I'm in their life? Mm -hmm. Or are they worse because I'm in their life? You know, mm -hmm. so does anybody th have anything else they would like to share to bring out? I know I appreciate uh, Robin's honesty and being transparent because it is true. You know, this this relationship, 
you know, relationship is everything. It really does help how you develop a community, how you, your church um, relationship, you know, for a kid that starts off whether or not to trust people because mm-hmm. of relationships, depending on the value or quality of mm-hmm. the relationship. You know, as a sectionary, it talks about for parents and their mm-hmm. role. And that is just so important. But if they come from a broken relationship, if they never healed and they're just mm-hmm. going on about life, well, they're passing that down to their children. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, he, he covers a lot in here. Mm-hmm. But thank you, Robin, for the transparency because it's so true. I'm still a progress too, as well, you know, so. And, um, and, and too, we got to realize too, even though we talk about relationships, God, he'll remove the relationship. If it's not that's true too. what's supposed to grow with you. So that's sometimes true. we feel like, dang, you know, I did this and I did that. And it still turned out, what did I do wrong? You ain't mm-hmm. do nothing wrong. God mm-hmm. was like, hey, I put it there, but obviously that's not what, it amounted or the seeds didn't amount to be. So I'm going to remove the seed that ain't supposed to be there. And we don't really see it at that time because of course you feeling like you did something wrong or you feel like mm-hmm. how possibly you did for this relationship, whether it's marriage or just friendships or whatever. And then over time, God will reveal to you, Hey, I removed that person or I removed you for that mm-hmm. reason. <laughs> so we have to look at it that way as well as if we didn't do anything wrong. It's just, you know, right. like, that wasn't the relationship that you were supposed to grow with. So mm-hmm. and two, and two, that everybody, because God loves us so much, he gives us the power of choice. Amen. People's mm-hmm. pa- people's choices impact mm-hmm. relationships. Mm-hmm. And we can never forget that. Mm-hmm. What we do, we stop we started out this book talking about what you do, your choices impacts other people mm-hmm. those choices mm-hmm. that you're making are seeds that are impacting other people's lives mm-hmm. so when you make a choice you make a decision you you need to just think <laughs> think people <laughs> is this gonna better my family is this gonna better me mm-hmm. is it gonna mess up my family is it gonna mess up my finances you know not even t- just even a, down to the small um, it's not small, but in our finances, you know, mm. do I, you know, spend the money on this? Is this going to cause an argument in the house? You know mm. what I'm saying? Do I, it's, so it's so mm. many mm. things that we need to stop and think mm. before we make a decision. Cause it's not just about you. You're, mm. you're impacting your friends, your children, your church. And I'm going to wow. take it all the way here. Your legacy. You are impacting yeah. your legacy <laughs> and future that's generations. That's a good one. Yes. Woo. Okay, ladies. <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> that, this is serious. That was, but, yeah. <laughs> but on, I like to close with this quote from him on page 139. And it says, and this is my prayer for us and for the 15-minute family, people who discover this video. May the seeds you plant in the mm-hmm. souls around you bear pleasant fruit that improves the world and gladdens the heart of God. All right. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day. Yes. <laughs> that is what quality relationships are about. Yes. Mm-hmm. Anyone else have anything else to say before we sign off? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, family. That is our prayer for you tonight. Think about your relationships and what you bring to the table. Ask God to help you to be a quality person because at the end of the day, you're responsible for you. We're not gonna be responsible for other people's choices. We're not taking on any unnecessary baggage. We just want to live and, and, and bear good fruit, pleasant fruit, that people can eat from us and that we make God smile. And all of this is mm-hmm. done by his grace. We don't even have the capacity to make this happen <laughs> without him. We can't even, I need to get off of this. Okay, family, <laughs> we love you. May God bless you and keep you. 
and may his face shine upon you today, wherever you find yourself. Know that you are not alone. Surround yourself mm -hmm. with the quality relationships and a community of people who will uplift your hands, your arms in times of trouble time, and, and shout with you, rejoice with you in times that are good, because this is what this life is all about. We need each other. So thank you yes. for tuning in. Don't forget to, what is it, girls? Like, share, like, share and leave a comment. <laughs> and leave a comment. Yeah. And leave a comment. Mm -hmm. We greatly appreciate the time that you take to watch our videos. I hope you feel our heartbeat. We just want to yes. put some practical principles and the love of God out into this world. So next week, um, Sister Angela is going to come and share with us from mm -hmm. chapter 12. And we're just going to continue to share our perspectives. And we pray that you sow seeds, that you can live the life that you're dreaming of. God bless you. And we'll see you next time. Bye, ladies. Bye-bye. Bye, good night. Again, we thank you for listening to 15 Minutes Food for Thought. If you enjoyed today's topic, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and join our group on Facebook. Our prayer is that you were blessed today with practical principles that you can apply to your daily living. We'll see you next week.